partnership with Yali Regional Leadership Center, East Africa, will implement the Startup Garage program, whose main objective is to stimulate growth of sustainable business startups for increased youth employment and incomes in southwestern Uganda, targeting youth, 70% of women and 30% of males with business startups between the age of 18 to 35 years. By facilitating the establishment and development of sustainable business startups through using incubation model, promoting application and usage of ICT for business competitiveness and growth, supporting business startups, access affordable financing through linkage to microfinance institutions and establishment of a eight startups fund, promote business startups to access wider markets through utilizing e-commerce platforms, social media, and the TV and radio online. Do you want to register your startup? Call us now on 0789-000-492 or 0705-909-760 and 0781-555-245. Hello, my name is Alexander Chokujuka, the author of How to Start a Business in 10 Days and a business coach, trainer and public speaker. I have come today to speak about um, business beyond COVID-19 because COVID-19 has come and has shaken everyone. Everyone is thinking about how to survive after this pandemic. Those who lost jobs, they are thinking of how to get income again and suddenly those who are running business are a bit stuck because people don't have money. But there are a few things I would like to share that I think uh, beyond this COVID-19 pandemic, people can still get back into business and, you know, do business and get money and at the end of the day get a sustainable life. Business will not be different definitely, but what will be different will be the strategies that we take to ensure that we get customers coming and we get to make sales. I want to first make sure that I let you understand that business is about sometimes the idea that you have. What exactly are you thinking about that you want to sell to the public, to the people? Now, once you have the idea, it's always very important that you appreciate the environment. The academics usually want to call it a SWOT analysis. You look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the, the, the opportunities and the threats. All these help you to scan through and understand the environment within which you're going to operate so that then you get to know where you need to put in more energy, more efforts and where you need to put efforts to grab the opportunities around you and be aware of the threats so that you can avoid them. So understanding the environment will help you to know how to approach their needs and also design your products and services on how to respond to their needs and once you satisfy their needs environment you are able to start your business or to revamp your business and once you do that then at the end of the day you'll be able to create a job for yourself a job for a number of people around you you'll be able to pay taxes to get to the government and you take part in the profit of the country there could be also opportunities maybe uh, the the Ugandan government has um, mentioned very many times that there's some money in the Ugandan development bank it is important that any entrepreneur out there, you should take interest in understanding the access procedures for this money, this stimulus package, so that then you can take charge of it and you know, benefit from it and then your business can have capital because in most cases, people always say that what we don't have is capital, but then some of these could be, uh, some, of the, uh, could be some of the sources of the capital. But also there are very many other um, institutions which are giving out money, you need to understand where that money is, go apply for it and do all that you need to do and then you should be able to get money to start your business. Um, finally, I think I want to engage and I want to encourage everyone out there that whether you still have your job or you lost your job, it's very important that you always think about starting a business. Those who have not read my book, you just need to understand the steps to start a business and that will help you run sustainably. Once you run sustainably, we should be able to create very many other rich people, rich entrepreneurs with big enterprises and Uganda will be much better. Thank you so much. And I can see our newly elected leaders already in place. Uh, we are so glad to have
afternoon. So the program is going to be very brief, and it will start right away when the, the chief gets right, when the chief gets gets to enter into the building. When the chief gets uh, gets into the building, we have uh, some introductory remarks uh, from uh, one of uh, the members from the outgoing EXCO, and I'll be doing that. Uh, we will also, after that, we'll have uh, the outgoing chairperson, Alex, giving us uh, the speech uh, for the outgoing uh, executive committee. Then after that, Alex will uh, invite the chief guests to make a, a remarks. And after the chief guest had, uh, has made a hurry marks, we'll have a, of course, the, the, there will have a, a handover ceremony between the outgoing committee and the incoming EXCO members. And then after that ceremony is done, we'll have a, a speech from our incoming chairperson. You, you welcome, Madam Ambassador. That's our chief guest that has just arrived here. And uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to request uh, all of us to stand up and we have uh, an opening prayer before we proceed to any other function. Thank you. Let's stand up for a, a brief prayer. Lord, we want to humble ourselves before you. We want to thank you for the gift of life. We want to thank you for our lives. We want to thank you for our brothers and sisters that are already on their way and those that are online that are following this event. This event is not an everyday event and it is representing uh, alumni from all over the country but because of the COVID-19 restrictions, most of them are not here. Most of them are online. So we pray that Whoever is not in this place may be blessed by the message and the information that we are going to be passing on from this place. This is done for the good of the chapter, and we pray that the incoming committee can take the chapter to the next level, and we pray for all, that, all those members that have been in the leadership of the, of the, of the chapter to bless them with their lives on their way, in, in their lives onwards. We want to pray for everybody that, has been, that is going to be part of this event, and we we put this event in the in the hands of the Almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody says, Amen. Let's do one stanza of the national anthem, and then we start. And then we sit. Uganda, may go We live our future. United free for liberty together we always stand. Thank you. And take your seat, please. Our guest of honor, Madam Ambassador, you will come to this place tonight. Representatives from the embassy, representatives from uh, the chapter, the chapter court heads, former leaders, newly elected leaders of the chapter, outgoing chapter leaders, our partners and well wishers, and the entire alumni body that is watching us online, we welcome you to this event the 2021 
Uganda chapter yali LLC leadership handover My name is uh, Charles Bwanika and I'm the outgoing communications chair a position that I've served for the last uh, couple of years because we came into office uh, in May of uh, 2019 and we've served in uh, during the unprecedented times because we had a lot of plans but uh, because of COVID-19 of course most of our planned physical activities were disrupted because of uh, COVID-19 but nevertheless we've done what we, we could with the support of uh, the entire alumni body and we want to thank you all for the support that you've accorded us for the last 24 months of our tenure. Thank you so much. It was uh, the 17th of uh, November 2027, I vividly remember, when I received an email from the center that I've been accepted into the program. I was very excited because I was supposed to be at the center the following year in mid-March. So when I was at the center, I, I still remember what the chief of party by then, Mr. David Kamau, told us during our I mean, inauguration speech that he gave us when, when, when he was uh, welcoming us at the center. He told us that the program was purposely made for community transformation. And all that we were to learn from the center we are supposed to take up, to take this information back to our respective communities. No matter which track we were admitted into at the center. And I can attest to this that I've witnessed this uh, all the time that I've been part of this alumni body. And before I came, I, I mean, before I was part of this ex school that is outgoing, I, I got a chance to interact with the numerous alumni that are spread all over the country. I've seen people doing what we were told at the center, community transformation. People are doing a lot of work and uh, you just need to visit some of these places to understand what the yearly alumni are doing out there. So we salute you all people that are doing what you were told to do when you went to the center. I also want to thank the former leaders because they laid the foundation where we, we have managed to also put a, a contribution to the chapter. The likes of Obi, the likes of Penny, I can see Penny in the, in the building, the likes of uh, Flavia that, that has just gone to parliament, the likes of uh, very many people have, have contributed to this cause, the likes of Kevin. I mean, people are doing a lot of stuff. So we, we appreciate and we don't take this for granted. We appreciate the work that you did, that, uh, that we found in place, where we've also managed to contribute as uh, the outgoing chair will, will, will attest to that in, in his speech later. But also, I also want to thank the alumni that, that were led by Penny, of course, again. The alumni that were led by Penny during the lockdown, that initiative that you guys came up with uh, to see that we support our, our friends, our alumni, our fellow alumni that were deeply by the, the disruptions of uh, COVID-19. Because these people uh, that were led by Penny and the team, Kevin, Joel, Rachel, and many others, managed to start up uh, an initiative that is called uh, is it the Emergency Fund that helped to reach out to alumni that were deeply affected by the lockdown. So we appreciated that, and that is the heart of uh, Yali. The fact that I'm not the speaker of the day, I'm going to cut my preamble very short so that I can allow my outgoing chair to come and take the center stage to tell us what has transpired in the last two years of our tenure. And thereafter, Alex will guide us. Oh, yes, she has just made a reminder to me. She has just made a reminder. We're here as strangers. Some of us don't know each other. So it is very, very key that we get to introduce ourselves.
Hello everyone. My name is Bruno Ignatius Namisi, cohort 38. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Christopher Onang, cohort 31. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Deo Walusimbi. I happen to be the king and the head of Court 39. I'm happy to be here. Um, good afternoon. My name is Sarah Oembarazi, Court 41. Thank you. Greetings to you all. I'm Sarah Jackson, Court 41. My name is Penlop Katanaji. You can call me Penny. Cohort 4. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jen Ndivalikira Ukenya Semakula. Cohort 13. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Eva Ashley, Cohort 19. Nice to see all of you here. My name is Patrick Seth Nyakojo, cohort 37, and I'm the cohort head. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Senior Jobadru, cohort head 35, 34. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chevronet, and I'm cohort 34. I'm Fiona Namtevi and I work with Capital FM. Good afternoon, you guys. I'm Chamba de OLC. I work with SWAT Media. Good afternoon, everyone. Mutiaba, my name, uh, Code 34, elected East Council of Marketing Division. Samoge Elias, Co 34, elected councillor, matching the law. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nabi Suwita here, Co 34, elected councillor, Chuyetu Parish. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name is Aquero Kevin. Cohort 7, some of you say I'm so old. <laughs> I am the former, former events and networking chair. I served in the term of 2017-2018. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Protocol observed. My name is Stephen Katende, Cohort 21. Ricky, U.S. Embassy, Cohort Zero. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Annette Birundi, Cohort 18. from the center, uh, we were doing uh, these high ropes, and I've ne I'd never done that before. And the lesson that I learned from uh, that session was, was like, uh, sometimes you just have to turn your life into a museum of uh, adventure so that you can work off your creative instincts. I, 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 I can now. Uh, I can attest to that that uh, ever since I came back from the center, I've not been the same person. 
and I, I, I want to appreciate the center and the embassy for initiating this program and for supporting the alumni body and the chapter, Uganda chapter at large. Thank you so much. We, take, we don't take uh, the support that you give the chapter for granted. We really, really appreciate that. Alex. Alex. You, I, I, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you here so that you can take us into the next session of, 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 of this event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you so much, Charles. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, Mama Natalie Brown, the Public Affairs uh, Officer of the U.S. Embassy in Kampala, uh, Mr. Brian George, Madam Kali Van Oman, uh, our usual friend and partner in crime, <laughs> Peter, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to this humble event and also to thank you so much for affording us this modest but important event in the history of the chapter. <coughs> My name is Alexander Chokwishka. I go by the trademark, the humble citizen from Chigarama. Because I'm so proud of my roots uh, and my story that starts from Chigarama in a district called Kabale in the southwestern part of Uganda. I am so proud to be going to hand over today as the chairperson of the Young African Leaders Initiative Alumni Chapter of Uganda from way back in 2019 until today away from yali i do a lot of um, a lot of work i am a business consultant i am a trainer i am a marketing expert i am a part-time politician soon to graduate into full-time politics i am a proud father and husband and above all i'm a ugandan I also want to thank my friend Ndugu Muhumza Faizo and his team uh, for a simple reason which I will share with you. The last two years have been a very interesting period. Those that have been involved know that we have gone through something sort of similar to what our president Ewan Museveni went through when he was coming from the bush. That, that he usually alludes to that he, he passed through a, 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 a tunnel. A, a tunnel because of what? A tunnel. <laughs> so when a call was put out for leaders to come and take over leadership, I was very interested in seeing who that bold person was going to be to pick interest to run for some of these positions. I want to congratulate you upon picking the confidence. Because some of these things, you may look at them from afar, but when you are in there, that's when you know the depth of the struggle. <laughs> I sincerely congratulate you and I wish you the very best. The time I joined the Exco, uh, of course the likes of Charles uh, Doreen and DPO and Diana had been there I think for a few months and uh, when my immediate predecessor Job Collins Okello resigned some of them 
informally came to me and said, we have unanimous agreed as the exco that you should take over from Okelo. And I had had my own seeking leadership in the chapter some time back in 2018. And I thought it wasn't a wise decision for me to get back to join the leadership. But I was in between a hard place and a hard rock. These are people who had picked confidence in me. And I did not know how to start to turn down what they had thought was the best decision for them as an ex co to have me join them and provide leadership. There was an interesting period around there. For those that I have not talked to, I want to tell you today that that period of around two weeks was one of my best moments in life because I think I picked some of my best lessons in life during those two weeks. I thank God that I later went through and became chairperson. But also to mention and maybe to reaffirm that my joining the Exco was not a mistake. And I'll tell you why. I'll give you two scenarios in my life. When I was in senior five, I was elected head prefect back then in my school. And I was given a team of 78 prefects who were leading a school population of around 200 students. I realized that it was a challenge because we were just too many to be effective. I remember taking a decision that has been, I think, the landmark in the history of the student leadership in the school. And I, I had to suspend a number of them and remain with only 15. That, prefector, that prefectorate has stood the test of time in history of the school and to date. They have not got a team like we had and they appreciate. When I was in Makerere, I ran for leadership and became president of the School of Education and later on president of the College of Education and External Studies. The School of Education back then was known to be the most violent and most polit politically active faculty in the, in the university. And every now and then you had strikes coming up here and there. I thought I could practice a different kind of leadership to make sure that some of those things could come to an end. And until today, when you go back there, they are proud of my team. And I am trying to tell you that I'd never come into these things for nothing. Forget how I joined the ex -Corps. But I want to thank the people that I found there. Charles, please stand for recognition. And I want to talk about each of them one by one. I joined a team that already had Charles as the only gentleman. And the rest were ladies. Charles is an interesting character that he will engage with you. But when things start to get confusing, there is a disease he says he suffers from. <laughs> and he will tell you, I have disengaged and he keeps quiet until the air, the air clears. But he is one of those that are very, very hardworking. And I want to thank you so much, Charles, that I found you on the team and I worked with you. Please sit. I want to talk about the others, even though they are not yet here. I want to talk about an interesting young lady called Doreen Ibano. I don't know that she's here yet. The alumni know that, like I said, that leading this chapter is not a walk in the dark. It is not one of those simple tasks that you will take on. And there was a time when things became tough that I think all of us were regretting why we got into those positions. I want to thank Doreen that even when we were deliberating and thinking on the next move, Doreen 
kept in the background and kept encouraging us and kept working. And if I should mention, I think in my own view, Doreen Ibano, in her absentia, I know she's on her way. She is the lady of the moment. And I want to thank her most sincerely for the outstanding performance on that team. I want to thank Diana Stella Nasike. Doreen was the Partnerships and Resource Mobilization Committee Chair. And uh, Charles has been the Communications Committee Chair. Diana Nasike Stella was the Events and Networking Committee Chair. She is a medical doctor uh, who at some point I also wondered how she had got herself onto the EXCO. And I was wondering where she was going to get time to serve on the EXCO. But I want to thank her in her obsession as well because she got, an, she got an opportunity to go and do her master's in the UK. And I think for the last, I don't know how many months, she's been working with us remotely, <laughs> virtually, but she's not here. But she has a very great and spontaneous mind that when we start uh, working, she will get you um, things done in a very short time. I also want to mention uh, uh, DPO Agnes, who has been our partnerships, uh, participants engagement committee chair. She has been part of the team. She works in Ajumani, lives in Ajumani, and also has been sort of working virtually. Uh, so now you have an idea how we have been working, and that is very, very interesting for you to know, so that then you understand why sometimes you have not had us be as spontaneous as the likes of Kevin during their time. But I want to thank my team for working so hard and making sure that we today come here to hand over an elephant. I say we are handing over an elephant today for a number of reasons. We are handing over a chapter that is officially and legally registered according to the laws of Uganda. If I were you, I would clap for that. We are handing over a chapter that is fairly decentralized and we have five regional cluster teams which are a replica of this exco. They have a chairperson and those other committee chairs. We are handing over a chapter that is almost 100% mapped so that then we know where each of the alumni is, what they are doing, and how useful they are to the chapter, leadership, alumni, and all the others. We are handing over a strategic plan that is two years into its implementation, even when there may not be so much on the ground for you to see. But we are glad that we are handing over this document, which should be a guide to the new team, but also there's few systems that we've put in place to guide decision-making and governance for the chapter. We are also very proud that we are leaving behind a fully-fledged chapter secretariat. We, in the next, I think, two weeks, we shall have an office that is paid for for the next 24 months. So that this team cannot worry about rent or address now. They can only worry about rent and address for the team that will succeed them. We are also going to hand over a well-functioning uh, website, which is going to be well-customized. And at this juncture, uh, Your Excellency, allow me to introduce uh, one of the most excellent, uh, excellently performing alumni, in the chapter, a one Moses O.B. Please stand for recognition. <laughs> Moses wears so many hats. He is also a jack of all trades. But very importantly, he has been handy uh, for the chapter. He does a lot of donations to the chapter, more than some of us can do. He gives a lot of subsidized services for the chapter. 
recently when I was negotiating with him for the website, <laughs> he told me, Alex, this money is too cartoon. <laughs> but I will go ahead and work since this for the chapter. I thank you so much, Ndugu. Thank you for having a big heart. We are also going to hand over um, very soon uh, five pull-up banners for the chapter to ease promotional efforts for the chapter. And also, we have a bigger and wider partner map. A number of people who are supposed to work with the chapter to ensure that we can get ahead. I don't want to say so much because we do not have the time for me to say all that I would have wanted to say. But allow me to mention that it is a public secret for the alumni at least to know some of the challenges that await you, Ndugu. But mine is to encourage you and also to call upon the alumni to wear a positive attitude and seek to work together, all of us, just like Muhumuz and his team have been trying to allude to us, let's build walls, eh? bridges, and not walls, so that then the chapter can be well included and we shall have the best for, for us all. I cannot go without thanking the former chairpersons who we invited to come and be part of this event. I only see one. Uh, please, Moses, once again, stand up for recognition. Moses was the chapter chairperson. Uh, which year? Okay. So, Moses was chairperson 20. 2016-2017. Thank you. And uh, Alan... Thank you so much. Alan was the chairperson 2018, right? 2018-2019. He's the one who welcomed me to the chapter when I thought I could lead as chairperson. And he defeated me terribly. But thank you so much for coming to be with us. And uh, this is very, very important. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you that where myself and my team could have fallen short of your expectations. I sincerely apologize. I promise that next time we are given another term, we shall do much better. <laughs> but I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank everyone who has spared time to come and be part of us and also to wish that we can keep working together to propel this chapter to greater heights. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude now, I take the honor and privilege to introduce and invite the U.S. Ambassador to Uganda, Her Excellency Natalie E. Brown, to come and address us. And also, we should have uh, performed some ritual, but because some of the ingredients are not yet here, we shall still perform the ritual before you leave. Madam Ambassador, you're most welcome. Thank you so much, Alex. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, everyone, for the invitation. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you today for this ceremony, and I'm always happy to be in a room full of so many um, motivated and determined and inspiring uh, young people. You give me hope, not just for the future of Uganda, but also for what uh, you and your counterparts can do globally. And I also want to send and extend a special hello to everyone joining virtually. I'm sorry we can't gather in person today, and I look forward to the day when we can meet together, but uh, until then, I want to thank everyone for the seriousness with which they are adhering to the COVID-19 guidelines. 
So you have all, as I've heard, accomplished a great deal and should be very proud of yourselves. As you progress in your personal, as you progress in your personal and professional lives, um, you will undoubtedly encounter obstacles and experience a few setbacks. But you should never lose confidence in your ability to overcome those obstacles, to learn from your failures, and to continue your journey of professional growth, community engagement, and self-fulfillment. And as you know, you're not alone in this journey. I'm so proud that there are more than 500 Ugandan alumni of the Yali Regional Leadership Center in, U in Nairobi. I think that, det <laughs> that deserves some applause. 500 is an incredible number. Uh, while we look forward, while we look to you individually as agents of change, it's when you come together that we really see the full power of YALI and your collective potential to shape the future of Uganda. The YALI RLC Alumni Association is a vehicle to help you shape the change and to support your continued growth as leaders. Creating a new organization is never easy, so I again congratulate you on the enormous work that went, to, that went into establishing this association and on your recent elections. That truly is something to celebrate. I also want to take a moment to recognize the members of the outgoing board. So Alex, again, Doreen, Charles, Diana, and Agnes, in spite of the challenges you encountered because of the pandemic, you were able to advance the chapter, organizing meetings, and formalizing the organization, and I applaud you. I think we should all applaud them again. To the new leaders of the Alumni Association, congratulations on your election and thank you for your service. We look forward to deepening our partnership with the association during your term. And to all the alumni here and online, while your passions and professions are diverse, we're you are united in your commitment to leadership, professional development, and community service. And these are values that resonate very deeply with me. So I was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska often referred to as the heartland of America. And growing up, my family instilled in me the values of serving our country and giving back to the community. My parents emphasized a belief in our shared human dignity and the promise of justice and equality for all, and the importance of speaking hard truths, even in the most challenging times. This is evidenced in the career paths that we all pursued. My mother was a nurse, caring for people at their most vulnerable times. My father was a police officer who took very seriously his commitment to protect and serve. My sister is a journalist, making sure the community is well informed and holding leaders accountable. And my niece, my sister's daughter, is a therapist who specializes in serving marginalized communities. And as for me, as ambassador, as U.S. ambassador to Uganda, I strive to ensure these values guide my actions while at the same time in carrying out my duty to ensure that everything we do as an embassy here is guided by the values enshrined in the laws and constitution of the United States. And so this is the first time that we have an opportunity to interact. Um, please let me, t let me tell you a little bit about what putting these values into action means for the United States investment in Uganda. When we speak about the United States activities, we often talk about numbers. In Uganda today, the United States invests almost $1 billion annually, including $500 million in the health sector alone. But more important than the numbers, is the impact of our investment on ordinary Ugandans. The United States supports the vision of a vibrant, prosperous Uganda where every child, woman, and man has the opportunity to achieve their full potential and to pursue their dreams. And we measure the impact of our activities according to their contribution to this vision. Some will say that we're just acting out of our national interest, and it's true that growing prosperity in Uganda provides additional commercial activities opportunities for American companies and additional jobs for American workers. It's also true that detecting and treating emerging infectious diseases abroad helps keep Americans healthy at home and when they travel the world, but national interest alone does not explain Americans' foreign assistance programs. When former President Bush established the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, which you may know as PEPFAR, he did so because he saw the scope of human suffering caused by AIDS, and he knew we could do something to end that suffering. And 18 years and $85 billion later, we are on the cusp of achieving control of the HIV AIDS epidemic in countries around the world, including here in Uganda. And when we implement programs designed to help marginalized communities, it is not just because it's in America's interest, it's because of our belief in the dignity of all people. 
So yes, foreign, sur foreign assistance may be in America's interests, but is most effective when it reflects our shared, value, our shared core values. And one of these values is the belief that the greatest resource that any country possesses is its people. That's why the United States invests not in flashy buildings, but in building human capacity. And Yale is a great example of the United States investment in Uganda's human capital, but it's not the only one. We know that young people can't achieve their potential if they are sick. So the United States invests heavily in child health and nutrition programs and in efforts to combat infectious diseases such as HIV, AIDS, malaria, and TB. Uh, it's the rainy season, a time when malaria cases rise in Uganda, but since the launch in Uganda of the US President's Malaria in Initiative, or PMI, child mortality from malaria has declined by more than 50%. That's an accomplishment that we can all be proud of. We also know that economic growth and job creation are challenges for countries around the world, especially for young people. And that's why our engagement in the agricultural sector includes USAID's Youth for Agriculture program, which has helped create new employment opportunities for more than 40,000 Ugandan youth. And I'm proud of these and other US investments are helping millions of Ugandans live healthier, learn better, earn more, and participate more fully in their communities. But as ultimately, all of you, dedicated leaders who are running businesses that create jobs, teaching future leaders, providing vital community services, and inspiring people through the arts who will determine Uganda's future. And COVID is one area where you, young people have stepped forward. For example, at the start of the pandemic, two young innovators in Gulu, a Ugandan and American alumni of the US Fulbright Exchange Program, developed a prototype of a face shield made from recycled plastic. Their product quickly beca became in demand as doctors in Gulu reached out for help procuring personal protective equipment. And with respect to COVID, the United States has worked hand in hand with the Ugandan Ministry of Health since day one of the pandemic. We continue to do so because we recognize that none of us is safe until, all, until we are all safe. Today, the United States is actively supporting Uganda's vaccination campaign. And as leaders, I call on you to urge everyone everyone in your network of influence, be they family, friends, colleagues, social media followers, to get vaccinated as soon as they are eligible and to follow COVID-19 SOPs rigorously until then. I recently attended the launch of a Yale Namai project. I think some of you may have been there. Um, that will plant trees in refugee communities across Uganda, spreading the message of conservation and replacing the trees cut to construct and provide fuel for refugee settlements. This is a great example of the leadership in the field of environment and climate change where youth really are driving change. But Yale alumni are stepping up in so many different ways. Uh, Fortunate Kasimi, from the very first Yale cohort, is founder and executive director of Girls to Lead Africa, a leadership incubator based in Kanugo District, whose mission is to develop the next generation of women leaders through girls' access to quality education, leadership development, and community engagement. Flavia Kalule, who is both an RLC and Man Mandela Washington Fellow alumna, stepped up by running for elected office and is the new woman MP for Cassandra District. And uh, can I ask Moses Obi to stand up one more time? Thank you, Moses, also from Cofort One for stepping up by providing financial support to the alumni chapter through his business as well as to fellow Yale alumni to whom he provides a discount on services received from his business Aeroprint. So thank you. You know, as Alex already said in terms of recognizing everyone, we just don't have the time to do that because there are so many great stories to tell. Um, but I do want to applaud all of the innovative work and community engagement. Um, let me reiterate, I, uh, I applaud these initiatives and the work that you were all doing. And I also want to say that we want to partner with you on your journey so that, and that partnership can take many forms. As alumni, you periodically receive information about opportunities to apply for grants, and we are currently looking for alumni to propose projects to help strengthen Yale networks in Uganda. And while funding is always, is always limited, there are other ways we can work together. We welcome your active engagement at the American Center as in Kampala, whether it's as a presenter, a trainer, or a mentor sharing your knowledge and experiences as Yale alumni with other aspiring leaders, 
And we also want to hear what you're up to, to spread information about your activities and, uh, and to celebrate your successes. And above all, we want to continue investing in you and in the Alumni Association itself. We welcome suggestions for future trainings that can help YALA alumni reach the next step on the leadership ladder or ways that we can help the Alumni Association reach its full potential as a force multiplier for the YALA program. And finally, we want to learn from you. I hope that we can call upon you for your advice and feedback because true partnership is a two-way street. We know that we have just as much to gain from your knowledge and as experience as you have to gain from interacting with us. So again, I, I thank you for your time, I thank you for your attention, and I thank you for the inspiration that you provide to me, my colleagues here, and everyone else who seeks to build a healthy, prosperous, vibrant Uganda. Thank you. Let's appreciate the ambassador for her kind words. Doreen, you were not here when Alex was uh, giving a, a full testimony of your work. Please stand up for recognition so that people can get to see. That's Doreen. In football, we say that she's the one on form. She was the one on form by the time we were exiting the Exco. Thank you for your service, Madam Doreen. Okay, so the next, the next activity. Handing over power from the old Exco to the new Exco. And I would uh, want to call upon the former leaders that I've been serving with to come up front. Please Dolin and uh, Alex, come forward. Actually, some of the people may not have even known you on an individual level. So it's this, then you need to talk to these people because the two of us have already spoken. So you can introduce yourself to the people that are online and the people that are in the building. Please, two minutes. Thank you. My name is, thank you. My name is Doreen Ibano. I'm the... I'm the Outgoing Partnership and Resource Mobilization Chair. Um, I thank you all for the opportunity you, you gave me to serve you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for your commitment to the chapter. Um, our handover does not mean we've exited the chapter. We are still part of the chapter. I think Alex, I wasn't around. But I don't know whether he mentioned we are in the process of creating a secretariat as the chapter for Uganda. Uh, we've already had a meeting with a new, with an incoming team, and we promise we'll work with you. We'll support you where need be until the structures are in place. Our mandate is to see that yearly alumni Uganda chapter is not just a community of alumni members, but is a set organization that can partner with other organizations, both on a national level and internationally. Um, the fact that we've started this already, we we'll walk through the new leadership to see that it's set in place, and probably have a few structures in place such that it's a continue, it's a, an ongoing process, even when they exit. Once again, I thank you all for your support and for believing in me. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. The new leaders, the world is awaiting to see you because most of them, most of the alumni actually voted without even knowing you at, at a personal level. So I think it's this time, it's this moment that the people out there need to see your faces, guys. Uh, Jackson, uh, Faiza and your team, Faizo, Jane, Jackson, Sarah, I saw Bruno. Guys, come up front.
I don't know how they're going to do it, but the team leader would guide us. Faizu, you will guide us on how you're going to introduce yourself so that we save time. So I'll Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Charles. Uh, just a few days ago, we had almost a similar ceremony somewhere near in uh, Nicololo. The only difference is that <coughs> I've not said anything. Anyway, uh, Faizo and your team. Uh, we are so much delighted, like I said, to be handing over to you an elephant. Allow me to first hand over this, uh, this important symbol to you. This is the ego, I think, which was won during the Moses Obi, during the Moses Obi time. Uh, it is a symbol that comes from the center, direct. It is a word to a chapter, a country chapter that performs that, 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 that performs exceedingly beyond the expectation of both the alumni and the center according to their monitoring you know, uh, processes. So this we are now that this is going to be home because it has been staying in people's homes from this one to the other. <laughs> but now it's going to have you know, a, a home. Also, very important for the chapter is the resources that we get from the alumni, the resources that we get from, you know, very many other friends and all that. And here we have a very important document. This, I think, is 20-something uh, pages, not, not around 40 pages, of the financial accountability for all the monies that we received during our time, during our time of office. And we hope that it will guide you to know how rich or how poor the chapter is so that you can add on. <laughs> <laughs> and then this document that has made some of us spend sleepless nights has the official handover. It has the strategic plan. It has the profiles for all the five regional cluster teams. It has cascaded strategic planning, how should I call it, work plans for all the five regional teams. It also has a number of other attachments like, like you'll find. We hope that this will guide you uh, for the time being until you organize us and mobilize us to come and be sure that we can give you further guidance so that you can carry on your term, you know, uh, the best way. Otherwise, I want to thank you so much uh, for stepping up. Like I said, I was eagerly waiting to see those who are going to pick their confidence, really, to come and take up the mantle. So we congratulate you, and we now wish to ask you to kindly speak to us. And uh, I don't know whether now I am a former chairperson. It feels, it feels a bit weird, eh? <laughs> but thank you so much. So, hello, hello, are you able to hear me? So, protocol is observed, but uh, I would like to give my team an opportunity to each one of them first give a word, then I give a speech. Thank you. Good evening, team. I'm Serious Jackson. Vincent Networking Chair. Thanks for your votes. Thanks for the opportunity to serve. I'm called 41. I joined the early last year. We actually did the training online. Yeah, so I, I'm very firm. Have the guts to serve you guys. If it's investor networking, 
I'm the true person to serve you. As a young leader, I just don't want to be a, a passive servant. I want to be a creative servant. That is who is going to craft the future of young leaders. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Sejas Green Enterprises. We recycle waste in two charcoal briquettes. have a cleaning company. I fight time with KCCA. And I'm just delighted and happy to be here with you guys. Very ready to serve. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all once again. Uh, my name is Sarah Wembavazi. I will, from cohort 41, I will be serving you as the participant and engagement committee chair. Uh, I don't have much to say, but to thank the previous, uh, the previous leadership of, uh, of the chapter. Thank you very much for your contributions, and I would also like to, uh, to thank you all who voted, uh, who voted us. And I pledge that I will work uh, under the leadership of our chair, Alexandria, and the rest of the team uh, to serve you diligently, but to also uh, listen to you and also uh, get your opinions and ideas on how you want the chapter to be run. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bruno Ignatius and I'm the incoming partnerships and resource mobilization chairperson. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for having voted for me because I got the highest number of votes from everyone. And uh, I would also like to appreciate uh, the outgoing team for the tremendous work that you've done through this very hard period. And uh, to all our partners, uh, I would like to inform you that when I took on uh, that position of partnerships and uh, resource mobilization, I tried to link it to the other positions and uh, I realized there is no way we can separate all these committee members from each other. We have to always work hand in hand, but yearly, according to my observation, is more like uh, a vehicle which has been serviced very well and uh, it, has, um, the, it has paid the taxes and the licenses to be on the road and it has very nice tires but it lacks fuel. And the fuel is more to do with resources and uh, markets for the products and services of these young people. And I will put in much as I can together with the team that I have been selected with to serve you in the best way that I can. Everyone is very, very important on this team and there is no way we can serve selectively. We need you, you need us. It did not stop on the time of, of voting, not as if that we have now assumed these uh, offices, so it should end here and the next time we meet again should be at the next handover. From now henceforth, we need each other. And please, let's remain in touch. And to you, our partners, please help us create more partnerships for our young people. Thank you very much. All protocol observed. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jane Dewalikirabu Kenya Semakula, once again. And uh, I'd like to thank you for, give, for giving me this opportunity to serve once again. Uh, I served uh, in the term 2017-2018. I stood and I didn't win. And the person who won unfortunately had to leave. So I stood in for her for the last half of the year. And maybe to correct Mr. Chair. I don't know if it's former chair. Our term is the one that won that ego. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm very proud to say that we're going to win another one. In these two years, more egos are coming. 
Thank you for interesting me once again. I am the communications committee chair. I believe this this role is is going to be well served. Um, I'm a journalist by profession. I work for a media consultancy called Ultimate Multimedia Consults, which currently has a partnership with the US Mission. Uh, we do trainings for university journalists, lecturers, and uh, students. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to make you proud. I believe that. Your Excellency, the US Ambassador, the Embassy representatives, the outgoing chairperson, former chair, 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 chairpersons, former leaders of the early chapter, politicians in this room. I've seen uh, people who won elections and uh, coming next, uh, in, in the next two weeks, you're going to be sworn in to serve the people of Uganda. The alumna body, both uh, representatives from uh, MWF and the Yali Regional Leadership Center, some are online. All invited guests, the media team, ladies and gentlemen, it is an utmost privilege and uh, a honor for me to stand here to address you this evening or afternoon. I'm optimistic that you voted in leaders who, first of all, understand the chapter, but are willing to serve. Personally, I got over 70% of your votes, with a low turnout of 46% voters. Out of the 252 who voted, 115 voted for me. And we are almost four candidates. That wasn't a landslide, but uh, it was a good one. I wanted to ask you, how many of you think we are living in a global village or a global world? A global village. Everyone here, almost everyone, believes so. You see, when you go to the center and come back, what everyone asks you is what did you learn and what impact have you caused? I want to report to you that the idea, the, the yearly idea is a great idea. And Madam Ambassador, you may take that feedback. It's a great idea because personally, when I came back from the center, that's when I promised myself that I'm going to go back to Kampala, to Uganda, and start a school I have already wanted to start. And I, uh, that was 2017. By 2018, we had a full school from nursery class to primary seven. And this year, Imperial Junior School had 37 P7 candidates. The first of our, uh, 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 since we started it. But what triggered us to start it was our experience at the center. Because you see, you are in a room or space where everyone is singing, transforming communities. Now, the same reason, the same reason why I appreciate the Yali idea, and I think you agree with me that the most important part of the Yali idea was the fact that, or the ability for it to bring together young, talented, enthusiastic, brilliant young people together from 14 different countries. You see, it's not about Uganda. 
it's about the 14 different countries and it's it's a pity if you're not in touch with all the people you met from other countries so for me that is the most important part and this is the reason why i brought myself to stand as a chairperson i'll give you a brief history the last time we had a chapter elections I wanted to stand. Ndugu Alex contacted me and he said I want your support. <laughs> you see, it was a secret. I I I I didn't know he up, he recognized it but the other day he told me I knew you wanted to stand. That's why I came first. I thank God that he has served and uh, done great job. I think then it was important that we came in later. Madam Ambassador, the chapter handbook, the, the, what, the handbook we get from the center when you're voted in as a leader, tells us that we should work with the embassy. It advises us that we must work with the embassy in our countries and they, it, 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 it continues to say not compete with it I read it the other day so we are not going to compete with you we are going to work with you and we beg we request that you kindly receive us with open hearts we shall write emails to you we shall look for you Hopefully you will receive us as people you know. Dear alumna, we are the first people to appreciate you because when you become a, a member of the executive committee of uh, the chapter leadership, it doesn't take away your privilege of being an alumna. So we are alumni, we, we, we come from, a, we, we, are, we are the same, we are together. And like I keep telling people I meet in the Yali fraternity, I tell you that Yali is full of the most talented, most brilliant young people in this country and in the region. And this election showed it. We have people who won elections. Not just this election. So many other things have shown it. We have young people who have started businesses. And as, uh, as someone who has started one, I know that it's very easy to come out and say you started one, but sustaining it and help making it grow is one of the hardest things. That's why you need to, be, to belong to a group of like-minded people. That's why we, we have ideas like bringing together people in business, in the Yali fraternity, such that you know each other, you connect together. Bringing out people in education. If you own a school, or if you're a head teacher or a leader in a school, you should know wh how many people in Yali have schools. You should be able to share exams. You should be able to to invite teachers from better schools to come to talk to your own learners, that partnership must come within, from within. I come from somewhere in Ntungamo, almost at the border with uh, Rwanda, but I live in Uganda because I work in Zimbabwe and I work in Kampala. So such we have such knowledge of being able to connect with so many people from different places will be important. 
in the I, when we come to the idea of respecting people's ideas and opinions. And that will bring out the idea of inclusivity, which our campaign ran on. And we ran with a, a very popular slogan that said, uh, Mr. Obi, building bridges but not walls. I do not read that uh, the Kenyans have a BBI going on, building bridges initiative. So it's important that we build the bridges by first accepting the hard truth, like the ambassador noted, and speaking it and communicating it, but also listening and appreciating everyone's idea and opinion. So alumni and our guests, in the next few, few weeks, we are going to be sharing the work, our work plan. We are going to be sharing our planned events for the whole of this year. We are going to be sharing the new ideas we've gotten from feedback from alumni, which we have been carrying out. In the next few weeks, kindly be proactive when we approach you, when we reach out to you. And like some, some people in Yali say, the chapter is us and we are the chapter. Leaders, remember the entire goal of this association partnership togetherness is transformation of this, of our local communities, our country, the region like some popular politicians said the other day, Africa and the world at large. Transformation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to me. May God bless you and I request that we continue with our optimism like we started. Let's build bridges and not walls for God and my country. Uh, I'm standing in for Charis. I think he has moved out. As he comes, I think he has the program, the official program. But as, as he comes, let me um, ask someone who is from cohort one, one of the legend, at least to say hi and introduce himself. And one of our former chairperson, I think when we were making the introductions, they weren't in. Please, Hakiza. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. This thing is taller than me, so I'll try to adjust. My name is Ronald Hakiza, and I'm so happy to see everyone here, especially the ambassador. Nice to meet you in person. And my, I was in cohort one, that is 2015, and yeah, I met Obama. <laughs> I'm serious, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I am very serious about that. And I had the honor of being in the same room with him. Yeah. But the most important thing is that uh, uh, life was transformed at Yali. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Oh, yeah, I served on the Exco. Mm, yeah, I yearned one. Eh? The one regime backward, which I was uh, before COVID, okay, uh, 2018. Yeah, I served on the co on on the co on on the exco, and uh, the report is there. It can be read, and everything. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming, and uh, good to meet you. Thank you so much, Prosi. Uh, 
I, 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 I realized that someone said there is another, le not legend, another former chairperson. I hope that's not Alan. Is there another one? Okay. But maybe, uh, Madam Ambassador, with your permission, if you don't mind, maybe we invite these former chairpersons. Just say a word or two. Thank you so much. We start with uh, <laughs> the, the, common, <laughs> the common suspect. <laughs> Moses OB. <Obi. laughs> Please come and uh, say hello to us. Then after we shall have Alan, and then I think Charles will be getting back to us. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Your Excellency, the Ambassador delegates from the U.S. Embassy, alumni present, congratulations to those coming in, and well done, the outgoing executives. Benny, please come forward. My name is Moses Obi. Penelope Katanagi served with me in the first executive when the chapter had just been formed. We are so grateful that the outgoing executive finally incorporated the chapter, so we exist as a legal entity. I didn't hear anyone saying thanks. Doreen Ivano and uh, Jen and uh, Prosy, they all took over from her what she used to do, and Kevin Aquero. And Kevin has been very active in all events. I don't know whether she has a job. She's always in these things, all the time. I appreciate what she does as well. Uh, members, uh, the ambassador read my name as one of the giving people. We don't give because we have. We give because we want to uplift the welfare of others with the love we share. My parents were medical workers. My mother is a retired nurse. My father is still a practicing doctor. They must have met in a medical school. They have always been taking care of people. And my father's uh, clinic is always in areas because of forgiving people medical bills for not being able to pay and to him it is very okay. It's a very bad mentality for business but to him it is better to have a healthy community member than having a person fail to get medical treatment and they pass on. And his legacy has lived on even in his current old age. The community appreciates him though they have taken a lot away from him. I think that's where I got it from taking care of others, sharing the little we have, is what really makes my family happy. This is more of a family thing. We don't look on when we have something and others don't have. So that's how we share. But most importantly, what we give out comes from the businesses we do. Madam Ambassador, I don't want you to take this badly, but I think uh, I need to share this openly as you said, the bitter truth has to be said out well. It is very, very hard to see Ugandans always leaving Ugandan products because they be don't believe in their own people. I would like to say this loudly today and those online. The states you admire, the countries you admire, those you go to to look for better jobs didn't develop because of foreign products. Countries develop on the taxes paid by the local industries. If you don't promote and support your local products, Uganda will not grow to the state you want it to be. We can only criticize government if we play our part as citizens who consume local products and 
participate in paying taxes. When it comes to taxes, everybody feels it's too much on them, it's so much of a burden. But the aid you get from the U.S. Embassy is from taxpayers in the United States. It is not from just donations and charity. We can also, as a country, reach that level of carrying out foreign missions and also impacting other countries that are doing badly if we play our part by objectively criticizing government and also supporting local content, consuming local products, and raising the tax base of the country to be able to give more to countries that do not have. So that's what I would really want us to take on. Today I have not seen any exhibition of those who locally make products. Do we have anyone here? Yeah, there is the TV, that's a great initiative. Then in a tangible product, a pen, a brush, um, someone making bread, T-shirts, anyone, plastics, anybody? We need to do that. Whenever we have such events, the incoming executive ad advocate for alumni to bring and showcase the products they do. This is why they have them marketed. This opportunity has passed very many alumni having their products showcased on TV. They, they have missed out this. They have to pay for money to have this done. This would have been a free platform to have it showcased to the entire world. This is an online television. It's not just a local broadcasting TV. With these few words, I'd like to say congratulations to the new team once again. We shall still be working together. I'm still part of the chapter, and I continue to give my support as Moses Hall. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Uh, Alan Muranjira, please come and share with us. When I was at the center, some gentleman told me that there was another guy in the chapter who I looked like. Just that for me, I was a bit thorough. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, all protocol observed. Okay. I think I'm also as tall as Hakiza. Um, a good afternoon. Comrades, um, first and foremost, thank you, Alex, for um, having us here together for this handover. It has not been an easy two years, but uh, we are here to, um, to receive your good works and welcome Afaizo, who I also know that um, he will only do better than you have. I served with Haki, but he has already been here, so we served on the same team. And me, I uh, may be first to thank everyone that made it, those that are online. It has not been an easy thing uh, for the past year to be online for so long. So sometimes there is that fatigue that comes in. So if some people have not joined us, it could be because um, there is that little bit of fatigue of having some of these interactions online. Uh, Faizo, uh, thank you very much for offering to serve, especially when it's a volunteer a position. You know, most of the times when the expectations that people come with when they come to serve, especially as uh, committee members. And I, I don't know, maybe along the way some get disappointed because maybe they thought um, there are certain benefits that they'll get by serving, but this is purely serving. And um, there could be other benefits that may come uh, as you being chairperson, as you serving and leading us uh, forward. But um, it's purely um, volunteer. And um, like I said, um, there will be challenges. Uh, the, the, the biggest tool is that um, sometimes I think during our time we'll be saying, but this is, no one is even paying me. When everyone is on your case, and you're like, but I'm even doing this for free. And for some people, they usually want to get off at that point. But um, this is a great team. Uh, these people will support you, reach out to them. If you need anything, um, I know I, I, I know everyone has been talking about Moses, but yes, uh, usually people would say, if you have a challenge, reach out to the alumni. There are people that, you know, uh, if I want this done, talk to this one, he'll talk to someone, and things will get moving. And um, for our alumni members, support this team. I know we've had challenges uh, before. Sometimes we don't have agreement in thought and all those other issues, but... The bottom line is that uh, the chapter has to move forward and we have to uh, be there for the benefit of each other. Um, I'll say this, for example, when 
Faisal was campaigning, he made an offer that seemed unrealistic. He said that he was going to develop um, websites for alumni at a near free um, price. And someone came to my inbox and was like, but that is not possible. And then I told them, but he has done it for me. I had paid two developers to do my website, and they had all done very bad work. Until Faizo saw it and told me, but why don't you let me do something for you? If you feel like it's good, appreciate me. And uh, if you want to, I think I posted the link in the group for people to see. So, um, and that's when I knew you that um, we are in good hands, and I wish you all the best. And, and like I said, uh, this is only a journey. Where you need help, ask. Um, where you need support, ask. And where we also need you to listen to us, also try and understand. Sometimes what we ask may not be in our interest, but make us understand so that we, we move forward. With those very many words, uh, allow me to thank you, Alex, once again for, 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 for this time and the support that you've given us. And leading Garcia, it's not easy. Leading leaders, um, everyone leads someone somewhere. So when you're leading people for two years, and doing it on pro bono, uh, it is not something that is easy. But thank you. And um, uh, for you, Faizo, all the best. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Council Alan. We have two items left before we go for, is it dinner or lunch? OK. We have two items left before we go into that session of uh, one. I would I would request our chief guest, Madam Ambassador Brown, to come. At Alex, I had Alex saying that there 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 are always rituals that we do at such functions. So it is that time that we need to do that ritual before we go into any other business. Madam Ambassador, I request you to please come forward and we do this ritual once and for all. I think here. I think yes, here. So that, so that everybody can be seeing you. There are some uh, statues here that you need to hand out. I don't know to whom they belong to. I need I need your support. Yes, thank you, ladies. Okay. All along, they have been appreciation awards. So, Madam Ambassador, these these are. Appreciation awards that are going out to, I think, to the outgoing EXCO and I think to other members because I'm seeing there are very many who would see as we go along. So this is this is for a one Diana Stera Nasike, and she's not around. Who takes? Okay, who who takes it for Diana? I know she's online. She's been texting me, Diana. This is your gift. We appreciate what you've done for the chapter for the last 24 months and we request you to keep going on with all the support that you've been giving us as a chapter. Thank you, Diana. I know you are online. Thank you so much. Cool. I'm going to take over because this award goes to Charles Wanka, the outgoing communications committee chair for appreciation of your outstanding dedication to the chapter as the communication committee chair. And this award goes to Ibano Dorin. This is to appreciate your uh, outstanding dedication to the chapter as Partnership and Resource Mobilization Chair 2019-2021.
Uh, this goes to DPO Agnes. Uh, appreciate your outstanding dedication to the chapter as participant engagement committee chair from 2019 to 2021. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask one of the cohort 34 members to come and uh, receive this award on behalf of Doreen Ibano. The councillors. And our beloved outgoing chair, this is for you. We appreciate your outstanding and much de dedication and service to the chapter as the chairman from 2019 to 2021. This goes to Alexandra Kyokijuka. And this unique award goes to Peter Eric. On behalf of the alumni chapter, Uganda uh, LLC, Yali, thank you for being there for the chapter since its inception. Thank you so much, Peter Eric. Thank you so much. I think Ambassador, you can go take your seat. Thank you, Madam Ambassador, for that ritual that has been well done. Thank you, Prosy, for standing in for us. Uh, as I told you, we, are, we had uh, two, two items that were left on the menu before we head into the main menu of the day. I, I would request, um, who is so prayerful here? We need to pray for our food. We need to pray for our food, yes. Yeah, I forgot to recognize one very important person. When we organized this event, and we mentioned that we were going to invite a few people, there was a concern how some of these things were going to happen. Uh, one of the young men who is one of us offered a solution. And I want to thank you so much, Ronald uh, Tushabe. Please stand. Ronald Tushabe is cohort, cohort 34. Cohort 34, again. Ronald is based in Barada, and uh, he has come up with the team up with this innovation, the AIT Online TV. Uh, it is something they are doing, and it has really solved a great, you know, a great deal. Because I, I can't imagine how many people are following this, like, this, this event online. We thank you so much. I call upon everyone to please, let's support our own. Let's sub subscribe. Keep sharing this so that then... Once our own becomes the next king, Kalisa, you never know then when he becomes rich, we are also rich. Thank you so much. I was going to invite pray, but then I saw uh, one of my heroes of, 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 of nowadays, Flavia, former chapter chair. Newly elected uh, woman MP for Kassanda District. Please, please, Flavia, don't, 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 don't kill this moment. Come, come, say something. Say something, please. You inspire many of us, and I'm glad to be one of your friends. And uh, I'm glad to be one of the guys that uh, canvassed the field. When we were looking for votes, we jumped on the border borders, and the last the last time we had an event of this kind, I think we are in this very building. I think it was March in 2020. I told people that Flavia is just waiting to be sworn in because I knew exactly what was on ground. Flavia, I'm so proud of you. 
and I'm happy for everything that you going through in this moment. I know the next week is going to be very busy for you, swearing in and all that. So let's, let's just steal this moment before you go and, and be sworn in on, at Parliament next week. Fabia, say something. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you so much, Charles. Her Excellency, I am so happy to meet you with your entire team. Uh, the former chairperson of Yali, Alex, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. The incoming chairperson of Yali Regional Leadership Center, Faizo, I am so happy to have you here and to see you being so neat. The former, former chairpersons, I see Moses around. I haven't seen Esther, but I am also among that category. Oh, and Alan, who is Alan? I also see Alan. He's at the back. Alan around. Uh, both executive committees for the outgoing and the incoming. I am so glad to have you here. My name is Flavia Kalena Wagabe. I am the current woman member of parliament of Cassandra District. I'm going to be <laughs> I am going to be sworn in on Wednesday 19th. And um, I owe my victory to Yali because I started from Yali and it's from Yali that I have you have made me the leader I am because when you're a leader of leaders, you're definitely tested. And so it becomes easier when you go into a community and you're talking with them because you know how to interact with leaders, so definitely you know how to interact with the people. Thank you so much for inviting me, Charles, to speak. I didn't expect to speak today because I am former, former. <laughs> but I'll just say one thing. Thank you, Yali, for breeding leaders, responsible leaders for this country. I know it's not easy because our country is so young. We are always looking for leaders and we know that it's only our leaders that are going to take and steer our country to where we want it to be. As young people, most of the times we shun away from the politics of the country, especially the mainstream politics, but it's always encouraging whenever we have one of our own in there because in the Mandela Washington Fellowship Group, we have one, one former member of parliament Honorable Jacqueline Amongi, I was with her in the MWF. We were in the same university, Bridgewater State University in Massachusetts. But now we have a second one. So Yali is breeding and we are breaking ground slowly because one of our key aspects, especially for those of us in public management, I know for entrepreneurship and business, uh, for civic education, we are everywhere. It's in the political area where we need to break ground because we kept promising ourselves we need to get there so that we can be where the decisions, the key decisions are made in the country. And so if you have me, uh, we have Jackie. I know Alex is vying for one. I also know Faizo is also coming. I also know um, this Charles here is among the people who want to come. And a number of us. Let us build our own yearly political leadership, mentorship group. Politics, particularly. Because much as we shine away from politics, it's where the decisions are made. And if as Yali we do not have our own breed of leaders within the political group of Uganda, then that means we are going to influence decisions from outside the boardrooms where it really matters. And so it becomes, uh, for me, this is a milestone that you have one of your own whom you have seen and mentored and walked the journey with there. So I hope that this can be an inspiration to others out there to come. And um, I am very glad to be here. And by the way, you don't only have me in politics, but you also have me in one of the key political parties in Uganda. And the political party that's, that produced the president, and we were rigged massively <laughs> because I am the chairperson uh, of the National Women League of the National Unity Platform. So being that I'm heading it, we had our president and our victory was robbed. It was just postponed because we know Come 2026, you are going to be in what? In leadership of this country. So I know, Alex, you want to aspire. So when you go that side, you just know that you'll be in opposition. We shall be the government in what? We shall be the government in power. But let me not say so much because all speeches were done. I am just extremely excited to be here. This is my family. That's why even when Alex invited me, we have a number of things we've been engaged with this week. But I said I will definitely make an appearance. Thank you for having my back. Thank you for loving me. You even organized the party when I was away. But thank you. And I will always be part of Yali because 
I've been through the Yale Regional Leadership Center in Nairobi, and I have been through the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program. So I understand both, and I'm always very willing to engage at any occasion, anytime, whenever you invite me. These were part of my executive committee. Kevin was um, one of, the, I think she has already uh, introduced herself. No? Please introduce yourself briefly. This was my committee at that time. You did? Kevin and Jane. Uh, Charles was, you were also, no, you weren't on my committee. <laughs> and the others. You know, I've worked so much with Charles. I keep thinking he has been part of all the leadership posts I've held. But that's the spirit. And we love you. We thank you. And we pray that with Yali, we can grow together and shape the future of this country. God bless you. And thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Flavia. I'm always excited to see you. Because you inspire very many of us, the way you handle stuff out there. All done, at, all done and said, we need to go for our dinner. You said it's dinner, eh? It's not lunch, eh? eh? <laughs> we need to pray for our dinner. I know the ambassador is very, very busy and the embassy staff are very busy. They need to jump out of this place. But we need them to have something to eat before they jump out of this place. Let's pray for our dinner. Uh, Doreen, come as you're outgoing, please give us that spirit filled uh, word before we go for our dinner. Thank you. Let's humble ourselves and pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to unite as yearly. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for every person that is here and the impact that we are yet to do in Uganda and beyond Uganda. We thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, your spirit to work within us. Father, we thank you even as we go to have our dinner. Bless it. Bless the hands that, the tummies that eat, the people that organized. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So, we'll pass through. Here, I think we will we'll go according to tables. So we'll, this table will go first, definitely. We'll go through here. Our dinner is just on the left. Thank you. Uh, sorry, just before we go, um, Charles is going to be giving out coupons. The hotel management will request for your coupon. Kindly present it and then go ahead and have your dinner. Enjoy the meal. Bon appétit.
Yes, thank you very much. He is watching A8 TV and he has been following us from minute one. Uh, we are live from Gol uh, Golden Tulip. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, live from Kampala. We've made it. Banana people. <laughs> but uh, with me here is uh, uh, Excellency Brown Natali E, uh, the U.S. Ambassador uh, to Uganda. We got blessed within the Corona period. 2020 is when we got her, and now we have her here. You're so welcome uh, very much, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you for using my middle initial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we are so glad to have you on the very, you know, this uh, ceremony. Uh, I think a very cool initiative uh, by the former President Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, one would actually quickly get curious why the American government find it so much important to support young, you know, Africans, especially from the three, you know, sides, uh, civic leadership, uh, Africa, I mean, public leadership, and then business and entrepreneurship. Is it something you like to do? I think, well, thank you so much for, yes. uh, for attending this event, and I, I want to congratulate the, the Yali Alumni Network for all of the um, incredible hard work they're doing. Yes. You know, the United States, we believe investing in people. Wow. You know, um, it, it's not about building, bis, build, uh, building buildings, it's about investing in the capacity. And when you look around uh, the African continent, particularly in Uganda, mm. there are so many young people and the future of the country is, um, is based on what these young people are able to do. So YALI, which stands for the Young African Leaders Initiative, she said it um, builds leadership, it looks at civil engagement, Mm. to give people the skills they have to, to achieve the future that they want for yes. themselves and for their community. Oh. So we think, and when you've listened to all of the people who were here today and spoke and talked about what they did, like building schools, building businesses, yes. that is a sound investment in the future of the country. Mm. Um, they're motivated, they're determined. Uh, more than 500 Ugandans are yes. now alumni of this network, and so the relationships that they're building, the bridges that they're building, I think that bodes well for the future as long as we continue to invest, invest in them and give them the skills and the resources they need to be successful. Uh, so you would proudly say Obama's dream is uh, achieved? This is a... Uh, I think we're continuing that process. It's a great initiative, and it's something that we look forward to continuing, and you've seen um, other administrations... Um, invest and support in this. Secretary of State Blinken just recently met yes. um, virtually with some of the Yali and MLI alumni signaling the continued U.S. investment in these, pe um, in these people that have such incredible potential mm. and the United States wants to continue um, our partnership with them so again that they can build the future that they want. I think personally I would dream of uh, these kind of uh, you know initiatives extended at the uh, you know nation level, from the regions to nations, and I think I believe I share this dream with so many other people. Are there stuff I would say in our language, things we should expect for the you know such initiatives? I, is there any support, for example, coming? We've seen them say they have uh, you know issues with funding and all this. Then there's also this issue we are supporting them. Some people are going to parliament. How about we established and supported them to support their local fellows? I think the amazing thing about the YALI program and certainly the people who participate in it is it's an initiative, you know, as we say, you pay it forward. So our, you know, modest investment in mm. the participants, we're seeing them pay it forward through their communities and through their networks. And so I think that's really where we will see this initiative grow as we've had people Today, they've been from all over the country and they're going back to their home communities and they're working, investing there and building capacity. And, um, you know, I, I think that's really the success that we'll see here in Uganda. We'll see it in other countries across the continent. So we're glad to be part of that initiative. We're glad to invest in these people. But really, this is something that young Ugandans, they have to, you know, do the hard work. They have the ideas. They have the dream. They have so much determination and talent and uh, grow that talent. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you for having me. Thank I'm you very sure, us. yes, someone watching us must be the happiest. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Once again, you are still watching AETV. That was uh, 
you know, uh, uh, the U.S. ambassador to Uganda, like I said. Now, uh, this, I think I should engage the incoming chapter head. Uh, you know, he will be at the helm of uh, the Ugandan chapter. We are talking about the Young African Leadership, uh, I mean, Leaders Initiative. What you could paint the picture, what you have in your, in this time, I would say, some time ago, a training word, Hodrop, uh, was trending. What do you have for, uh, you know, this chapter? Thank you so much for the opportunity, the mm. AIT TV. Mm. What uh, I can say we have uh, is quite much, mm. and I cannot uh, state it all here, mm. but I will tell you that we have run a campaign of uh, building bridges, not walls. Yes. We want to map all our alumni and bring them to on board. Mm. We are looking forward to building a sustainable fund for the chapter, and we are looking forward to going deep, deep, in the villages of Uganda, in the local communities of Uganda, to oh. empower transformation. Wow, that must be a cool, uh, you know, initiative because we have members and membership, I would say, fragmented in different, you know, places. And I think that would be some... Do you think there could have been some things the, uh, you know, the s uh, someone you're replacing didn't actually tackle? This is, not, this is not meant to be political, but... You think, okay, I think we should have, you know, achieved this in the one year or two or something. It's, it's very, very clear that you mm. can't achieve everything in two years. Yes. And our term is always two years. Mm. But uh, everything they have not achieved is something we are prepared to start on and do our part. Ah. Thank you. Well, Uganda, I think, I don't know, I've not been there. Maybe Comrade Ronald has been there already at the center. I do not know if Uganda outshines other East African countries or not, but, uh, well, it would have been my dream. Are you prepared? Someone watching, for example, from the village like Chigarama, I would say, and wants to join and, uh, you know, benefit from this. Would you help or become a stepping so stone for such a person? Yes, if uh, someone wants to join Yali mm. and, uh, and uh, join our leadership ladder or the training, we have a participant and engagement committee chairperson. Mm. In my role as chairperson too, I make sure I reach out, but all the Yali alumni are ambassadors. And we have got regional clusters. I'm, I'm happy to say I've been the chairperson of the, the Western Uganda chapter oh, cluster. Wow. Wow. And we have regional clusters from northern Uganda to eastern to central and to western Uganda. Mm. I think we always outshine other countries, okay. which of course is not our own our goal. Our goal is to empower transformation, uh. but we want an ego, which is uh, something the center gives out to the outstanding alumni chapter. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be welcoming and thank we wish so actually, we wish you very, very thank you well so much. Uh, yeah. within this term. Good luck. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Once again, you are still watching AUTV. Now, um, uh, with, uh, we used to know him uh, for the statement that featured a, a name or a word or a home or a village or a town called Rachitura. <laughs> so, so, so glad. But now, these days... Uh, a gentleman from Chigarama, is it? Chigarama, yes. yes, yes. Well, he is the outgoing chairperson the cha in within this chapter leadership. Uh, he has been the president of this chapter. One simple one for you. We could, uh, you know, at, I think they should have, you know, termed you as e-president. Because of the electronic thing, you know, that came in. <laughs> within amidst corona and all that, your term... Are there some few key, you know, achievements you're proud to say, oh yeah, I served? Oh yes, thank you so much, Sankala. Uh, good to see you again. Um, yes. I think it's very important. We found the chapter a bit uh, naughty, it has formalized. Mm. And uh, for us, we knew that a group of 553 uh, young change makers, mm. we needed to really give, you know, the chapter a good shape. So we tried to, we made sure that we uh, legalized the chapter. We incorporated it. We secured uh, a secretary for it, an office free of ledge. We did a number of other things and also thought that maybe it's not good to have leadership just at, uh, at the national level and then we don't decentralize. So we made sure that we decentralize down to regional level and we have all the regions in Uganda have fully fledged uh, cha uh, chapter clusters mm. uh, ranging from chairperson for the regional level 
up to the, all the other offices are replicated from the National Exco. And we thought that maybe it's very important that we have all these also cascade the strategic plan for the chapter to have those, uh, th th their work plans at their level so that then they can be able to bring down the activities to their level so that then the, 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 the main intention of YALI to, mm -hmm. trans to empower transformation can actually take root. So we are proud really. We think that I have been joking with people that we are handing over an elephant. Uh, so because we, we, we think that we have left the chapter mm -hmm. in a better place than we found it. I'm so grateful, of course, to the team that I've served with. Uh, the entire alumni, you know, membership for supporting us really and pushing us. Uh, leading leaders is not easy, but sometimes it only <laughs> brings out the best of you. Leading and leaders. Yes, and uh, okay. for us, we are grateful that we've mm. learned, the, mm. you know, the very many you know, important things, yes. Ah, yeah. well, um, I think the biggest uh, challenge here, uh, notably noted, was uh, uh, sort of financial support. Yep. Usually, the leaders you lead anyway are like us. Yeah. We look up to our leaders. Yeah. Uh, do you think there could be ways uh, the new leadership can sort of state some income generating projects well, for the chapter? Well, uh, resources definitely have been a big problem for the chapter because mm. once the chapter was not incorporated and legalized, there's no way they could easily fundraise. Mm. So the only option we had was to fundraise from alumni and also a few friends who could just bring in money. But now that we have legalized the chapter, mm. opened bank accounts for the chapter, Secured secretary for the catch for the chapter. Oh. We are sure that the chapter can now fundraise Lead from anywhere yes. okay. from all of the funders and all of that. So we think that the the current team is in a better place and they will fundraise easier because then they have where to begin from. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we will be closing in here. Thank Maybe you. if you have one like last last, you know you're now former. The focus is on someone else. Well, thank you so much. I, of course, I wish the incoming team the best. Um, uh, Dugu Faizo has been my friend. And uh, we, we, we also have been having him as the chairperson for the res Western Region Regional Cluster. Yes. So we, 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 we are confident they will do a great job. The team is, you know, they are young and energetic. And we are also there to guide them because we are not, we are not leaving the chapter as, mm. as, as former leaders. We definitely have the experience. We know all of that and we shall definitely guide them. And that should be you know, good for them to go. Wow. Thank you so much, Ndugu uh, Sankara. Uh, I just remembered one thing that uh, someone who follows Alexander Shokujuka yes. and then the talk of Chigarama. Yes. What's the future for you? Well, the future is that we are definitely getting to get into these things and take charge. Yes. And like I've already said, uh, we are no longer the leaders of tomorrow. Mm. We are the leaders of today. The, of course, the people of Chigarama have already started asking me to do something and we are trying. We shall definitely get there. And we shall tell the world what is, what is ahead. Well, thank okay. You. I you. think we could also say very, very much thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. You are still watching uh, Ayit TV. Like I told you, we are still at the Young African Leaders Initiative. Uh, Uganda chapter. I'm, I'm talking about the African Regional Leadership Center. Um, why I head around is because a few minutes ago, we watched a member of parliament, you know, growing from uh, this chapterhood, I would say, uh, going into, uh, you know, sometime PLO stated that if you feed an ego with uh, chicken feeds, perhaps later it would grow into uh, chicken. But then there was all reasons to say no. You're so welcome, Honorable. Uh, this is a uh, member of parliament, Cassandra, yes, uh, National Unity Platform. Yeah. And you say you got all the leadership, I mean, you said your foundation, you attribute every, you know, success to this. Yeah, definitely. You could perhaps paint the picture of what happens around if there's someone watching and dreams of joining uh, Yali. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much. I um, have actually been a Yali baby because I was among the earlier that's yes. cohort 11 and uh you know as we progress the numbers go bigger and bigger i was in cohort 11 mm. and i applied to be part of the public management course and um one thing that really struck I, by the time i applied i had already contested in the previous election general election the 2016 election oh. and i had contested in Mubende where i had emerged second with uh, which party? So we, and as an independent. Oh, <laughs> okay. So Ayali uh, came mm. as a leadership growth opportunity for me. Mm. So I went to Yali and I made a number of 
number of friends, the networking is great, but most importantly is the aspect of servant leadership that really keeps inculcating in us and wow. voluntarism and how you can get people to believe in you and your dream. And so that is one of the key things that I took away from Yali. And shortly after applying for the Regional Leadership Center, I applied for the Mandela Washington Fellowship, which oh, is yes. in the U.S., and mm. I also got in. So it also offered me more opportunity to learn about politics, governance, networking, lobbying, things like that that can actually help you. Okay. And, in, and it was so good to be part of this because a family of friends for yes. me i call it a family Network. of friends but it's mm. also a family of leaders usually when we are looking for people to help us in different spheres mm. we go into our yearly cohorts and we ask who is doing abcd and you find that this room is full of people in different sectors across uganda you know so for me i, I keep thinking this is where leadership is and this is these leaders are the people that are going to change uganda's sphere Oh my, so the generation that you know comes and uh, you, because they, like they said, they look up to you, yeah. they want to be where you are. Yeah. Do you think you have some support now that you are in a certain position, there's some support you are ready to render to these uh, ladies and gentlemen? Definitely, because I was supporting them as a chapter chairperson yes. before I even went into politics. Mm. And uh, um, I've also been supporting them even while I was off the chapter chair person leadership. So given that I am now in a bigger position and a higher platform to um, support them, I'll definitely mentor more uh, of them to those that want to aspire for politics. I'll definitely offer them whichever support they want in whichever okay. kind. So I'll definitely be there for them because, uh, like I told you, this is my family. Oh, Whenever yes. I am here, I am mm. among friends, I'm among sisters, brothers. I'm at home, so I hope that this step that we have taken to become MP, and they have been part of this journey for a very long time, yes. can just help the chapter grow, but also as individuals, it can help us grow. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank we you. look, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the support. And uh, like I said, thank you very much. Um, thank you as well. Thank okay. You. And uh, once again, thank you very much. You was watching. I think uh, we'll be closing from uh, here. Uh, Sankara Berhanga has been your gentleman behind, I think, the mic. Empower youth in technology. Business startups for increased youth employment and incomes in southwestern Uganda, targeting youth, 70% of women and 30% of males, with business startups between the age of 18 to 35 years. By facilitating the establishment and development of sustainable business startups through using incubation model, promoting application and usage of ICT for business competitiveness and growth, supporting business startups access affordable financing through linkage to microfinance institutions and establishment of a eight startups fund. Promote business startups to access wider markets through utilizing e-commerce platforms, social media, and the TV and radio online. Do you want to register your startup? Call us now on 0789-000-492 or 0705-909-760 and 0781-555. Two four five.